Following up the big trades that the Mariners just made the other day, what is payroll looking like for 2024? We'll talk about the one move that the Mariners might still need to make this offseason, and then we'll talk about a comment that we got over on our Twitter about what that move should be. Thank you guys so much for watching episode 50, the big 5-0 of the Hit It Here podcast, part of the Believe Network. Joe, how are you? I, I'm doing very, very well. I am pretty excited overall with how the roster is looking, how it's coming together. I think the last couple of days have been obviously the most exciting for just the Mariners in general. Whether you like the moves or you don't like the moves, honestly, to see action happening, to see things going down, instead of there just being nothing, you get something and there's, I think, things to be excited about. And I am I know we can't convince everybody that you know Luke Rayleigh is going to be a good addition, that if Mitch Hanniger's health, whatever, right? There's... There's not always that guarantee. But what I can guarantee is that the game starts with Bet Online. So here's a quick word from our sponsor, Bet Online. With NFL playoffs right around the corner and the NBA season in full swing, Bet Online has you covered with all the up to the second odds, news, and scores. And I would be remiss if I did not mention the national championship for college football. The University of Washington Huskies are in the natty, baby. Go dogs, January 8th against Michigan. It's gonna be a banger. So make sure if you guys want to place a bet on it. Bet online is the place to go. They've got additional odds, lines, trends, and info available to you both on desktop and mobile. So you can access the world's best wagering information anytime, any place. If you want to place a straight bet, check out some parlays, maybe, or wanted to place a bet on some player props, Bet Online has you covered there. Head there today to get into the action and see all the updated odds. And remember to use promo code BELIEVE, that's B L E A V, to receive your 50% off welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online. It's where the game starts. And after all those trades went down on Friday, Jerry DePoto obviously made some comments about those trades. But in the following day, Saturday and also on Sunday that we're recording this, comments and more just conversation, I think, has come out from. Jerry DePoto, and there was an article from Ryan Divish. It's just stuff that we need to talk about in relation to payroll because those moves that we made, they were cash neutral. Not a dime was spent in acquiring Mitch Hanniger, Anthony DiScofani, and Luke Rayleigh. But that doesn't necessarily guarantee that the Mariners are going to spend any more this offseason, or does it? And that's, I think, the big question that we're really answering or trying to figure out right now is whether or not they're going to spend because... It seemed like we were getting some conflicting messages from DePoto the, over the weekend, Colton. So let's go over the timeline of events here. So at the end of 2023, Jerry DePoto said that payroll will be higher in 2024. Okay, cool. So that means 2023, it was around 140-ish million. Maybe we're thinking, you know, 145, 150. Obviously going into it, we're like, oh, 175, 180, let's go. But yeah. we asked at the start of the offseason, we said, what do you mean by that? What do you mean by that? You mean... 141 you know mm -hmm. and then the rumors came out that the mariners were now working with a payroll budget because john stanton said "Ooh, root sports uh yeah i'm gonna buy you up and so we're not gonna have as much money as we thought we're like okay so maybe like that 145 is kind of what we're working with right 150 probably the cap well then we had all these trades go down where the money stayed neutral and ryan divish came out and said that the money is actually, the payroll is likely actually to be lower than it was in 2023. He said probably around 135 million was probably going to be the cap. Right now they're at what, 121? Uh, right now? 127? Yeah. yeah. I, well, so it was 121, I think, according to the goose, Darren Gosler. <laughs> but the article from Divish, Fangraphs projects the mayor's estimated payroll at 132 million, even if the budget was roughly 145 or slightly over. DePoto won't go right up to that limit. So if that's the case, that would mean that the Mariners would probably be at most have like $8 million spent at the very most the rest of this offseason. And so then Mariners Twitter was on fire, you know. F John Stanton, sell the team, all that good stuff. Like we all felt because that's just not acceptable. This team still is one bad away, although it is much better now than it was a few weeks ago. It is still, it still needs more help. And then on Sunday, Jerry DePoto went on to one of the shows on 710, I don't remember which one. And he said that payroll will be slightly higher in 2024. But the caveat was he doesn't know if that money is going to be spent in the off season or if it's going to be spent during the season. Does that mean the trade deadline? Like, I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. So if payroll, is that a cop-out? Maybe. <laughs> like, like I, that kind of sounds like a cop-out to me. But I don't know. That money needs to be spent this offseason, plain and simple. I think that the 
discrepancies between Gosler and Divish is very strange. I don't know, like, what the heck is the real number? I know Spotrack says it's closer to, like, 130-something. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know where Gosler got his numbers. I'm not sure. But the fact of the matter is, if it's 121, like Gosler's saying, the Mariners probably have 15 million to spend. If it's 132, they have at most 8 million to spend. So I don't know. Like, when you're looking at the rest of this offseason, how do you go about getting bats that, that, that you so desperately need? Because right now, I would still like to see an everyday outfielder, a guy that you can just put out there every day of the week. I'd also like to see a guy either at second or third base. Like, those are the only hill, holes I feel like you need to fill still. So mm -hmm. I'm not sure what, like, what, what, what do you think about the payroll? Do you think this is all smoke and mirrors and we're going to sit right, right here? We're standing pat the rest of the offseason or where are we at? I, that's the thing that's been hard is it feels like every single time there's a moment of transparency from Jerry DePoto, it does not provide any clarity that a moment of transparency usually would provide. It seems like there's more confusion than there was prior to him making any comments because obviously that's just him kind of like adjusting with the moves that they're making and like adjusting his, I think the, the points he's making about payroll and how they're spending and how they're the rest of their offseason outlook might go is of course they've made moves now he has to kind of adjust where he's speaking about in their process and so if it's you know it's going to be slightly higher or like they but like depoto's also said like oh we feel very good about where the team is right now mm -hmm. and you know if there's a move that happens and it comes to us then great but this is the first time the whole offseason that we felt if there's a game tomorrow we'd be okay going out and playing it and it's just there's i don't want it's like the angel and the devil of jerry depoto depending on what side you want to look at it there if you're john stanton the the devil is the spending money but if you're a fan the devil is obviously not spending money and it, it, i i just don't see a way that we don't add one more at least one more player to this roster and as it stands right now like sam Haggerty is probably your last guy off the bench he is your whatever you, utility man that you want to just throw in there if you don't think that you can find an upgrade in the free agent market or even trade if you really wanted to over Sam Haggerty for if it's only $8 million, you'd be a fool, I'd say. Mm -hmm. And if the trade happens where we trade a reliever for a bat, which is something that I think could happen because DePoto said like, oh, if it's a fun guy in the bullpen that they go out and sign, maybe the money that they have left to spend this offseason goes to the bullpen and they trade from that pen to get a bat. Because there's a lot of moving parts, and I think the trades that they executed this past week really shows that there's a lot of moving parts involved. It wasn't a whole lot of names like getting exchanged either way, but th I don't think there were names we really expected to be going in certain directions. And you're saying you want like an everyday outfielder. I'm just surprised they're penciling or trying to pencil Mitch in as an everyday outfielder, which I think if that, if they're... I think forecasting Mitch not being able to do that, saving the money, which is a dumb thing to say, but saving that payroll flexibility for in season to make a trade like that, that you can then go upgrade that position instead of having Cade Marlowe, Zach Deloach, whatever, be that outfielder that steps in for him. You make that trade quickly, kind of how they like traded for Carlos Santana in 2022 when Ty France got injured. I think that can make a lot of sense, but I think you can just do that in the off season and not wait for the regular season to start either way. Because, well, I feel like in that case, it'd be, it would be reactionary. You're like, oh shoot, Mitch mm -hmm. just blew out his knee or something like that. We got to go trade for X, Y, or Z. We're going to have to give up more because now we're in season. You know, these teams have needs in season as well. These teams all still feel like they're in it, you know, whereas teams right now are still kind of in the flux of the offseason. They're just like, okay, which way are we going to go? Like, what should we do next? Moves are being made right now. It's much harder to make a move during the season than it is in the offseason, in my opinion. Coming from a very experienced GM. Yes, of course. But my name's me. I'm very experienced. But I think that if you're going to do that, you can't, you cannot rely on Mitch Hanniger to be out there every single day. And you can honestly, you cannot rely on Luke Rayleigh to be out there every single day either. I like Luke Rayleigh. I think that there's a decent chance that he is really good. But if you're platooning Mitch and Canzone, then maybe. But if you're relying on both those guys to be your everyday outfielders around Julio, you are taking a major step backwards from Teoscar Hernandez in right field and Jared Kelnick in left. That's just a step backwards in my opinion. And don't get me wrong. If Mitch and Luke Rayleigh both play up to who they've been in the past, then you're fine. You're completely fine. But we all know Mitch's injury history. We all know the regression possibility with Luke Rayleigh. I don't think he'll progress personally, but we know that it's there. So 
how can you not go out there and still, like I've said before, even make make the bench even better? Because right now, Sam Haggerty's on your bench. Sevi Zavala's on your bench. That's a bad bench. <laughs> it just is. Your bench still sucks. And so I don't know if this is all the confusion between what Divish is saying, what Depoto's saying. I don't know if this is Depoto's confused about what the heck he's allowed to do yeah. with Stanton because that's how the offseason has been so far. Depoto went into the offseason thinking he had all this money to play with, and then Stanton said, mm, nope. And so is now Stanton maybe walking him back a little bit, seeing all the public outrage. He's like, okay, maybe now you have this. Like, I feel like just Stanton just doesn't know what he wants to do. And because of that, Jerry's out there to take the arrows for John Stanton like he always is and has to try to save face. Like, oh, we might go into the year with this team. We don't know. Because Jerry doesn't know. Jerry doesn't know if he if he's going to go in with this team or if he can actually go out there and make the trades to make this team better. So what you're saying is is that it's John Stanton's fault. Like, always. I hate the guy. Yeah, same. Yeah, it's it's pretty it's pretty unfortunate that there's just this le- this huge I think gap in understanding of what I think just like what a fan base or a team just deserves. And I understand that it's not my money, but like if you're broke, just say that, bro. Sell the team. Yeah. Call JG Wentworth. Like, yeah, get some eight seven seven cash now. now and call it a day. If the Mariners have one move left to make, which we all think they do, let's just say for a minute that they do make one more move to get a bat this offseason who do you think it should be who do i think it should be not mm. who do you think it will be who do you think it should be okay you did mention the other day a player with the detroit tigers i i did but that's not that's that's money that's nothing special but... that's nothing special the guy that, that he's in reference to that i was just doing a little bit of research on was andy abanez with the tigers mm-hmm. third base second base can play first base as well had a pretty decent year last year nothing nothing crazy but looking at production, he put up, I want to say, like, three... Nine, I think. Huh? 109 OPS plus, I think, in 2023. Maybe. So he had a 102 OPS plus in 2023. He did put up two wins, which is great. He'd be a nice person to add to your bench, and I think that's something that the Mares could be looking to do to upgrade that bench. Is he necessarily, like, a guarantee, a lock to be better than Sam Haggerty? I'm not... Yes. I'm not sold on that yes. fact. Like, I'm not going to, like, pencil in, like, yes, Andy Abanez will be better. But with more production, more opportunity to produce, he has done it. But I don't think that should be the move because this feels lateral. And the move that we should make should not be lateral, I think. It should be something to kind of elevate the roster in some capacity. And I, I'm having a hard time trying to navigate where the because the the roster crunch is beginning to set in i think a little bit with the personnel that we have because if i say randy or rosarena right now that is basically eliminating dom canzone from seeing any at bats or a decent amount of at bats in my opinion so i think honestly for me i'm now on your side of things with finding an upgrade at third base or second base making the the platoon for luis arias and josh rojas possible no, no shot. You're gonna pick who I'm gonna pick, right? Am I not allowed to say Isak Paredes? Oh, okay, that's fine. Okay, I think Isak Paredes makes a a decent amount of sense. Another huge regression target, mm-hmm. unfortunately. But with what we saw, the Rays being willing to give up, like Luke Rayleigh for just Jose Caballero. Obviously, they have a need at shortstop. Caballero can play short. They've got guys in that system that will be able to replace Isak Paredes, I think, almost immediately with Curtis Meech and your Kaminara. Like, there's plenty of names. I don't need to say them because the Rays are just full, like filled with infield talent. And I don't think it would cost that much. And if you wanted to trade Emerson Hancock for Isak Paredes, you probably could. He's lined up to be your AAA guy that's just ready to come up if you need him to. I think you can find that same thing with Jackson Kowar. Obviously, at, at less... I think volume or less high productivity. I think Emerson Hancock is definitely better than Kowar, what McCacken would give you. Sorry, Didara. But like, you know, I'm not going to lose my mind if they trade Hancock for Isak Paredes. I think it would probably cost more than just Hancock. It'd be him and then some guys that's probably not on the 40 man, just how the Rays want to operate. But I think that whoever the person they bring in is should be a guy that can play third base or a guy that can play second base for me. But before I get into mine, did you see the comments from Depoto about how much he likes Goar? No, I know. Chills. Like, dude is, like, he is going to turn him into uh, a demon. For sure. 
Like the bolt, like the Mariners pitching lab is going to turn him into a monster. I mean, if anyone can, it's the, it's the Mariners pitching lab. Yeah. So Colton, lay, lay it on me. Give me give me your your one move as the GM for the rest of the offseason. So if if I can only make one move the rest of this offseason that's not going to break the bank, you know, I can't go trade for Mike Trout. Mm-hmm. Like I have firmly been not on this train for all offseason. I was like, no, I'm on the train now. And that is acquiring Jorge Polanco. Oh, okay. I what do you think I was gonna say? We'll get to it in a second. All right. I think Jorge Polanco just makes a lot of sense. He should be your everyday second baseman. I think that moving the platoon of Rojas and Urias to third base, and because right now you have Rojas starting every day, right? Yeah. Like, and because now that Cabby's gone, and so it was gonna probably be a platoon of those two, but now it's like Urias and Rojas should be the platoon, which is kind of what we all thought it should be anyway. Polanco's a guy who. Long, long career um, filled with success. He's been good. He has, uh, like, I think he put up, don't quote me, that's like a 115 I'm pulling OPS it up. plus guy. All right, you're pulling it up. Yeah. And the Twins want to shed payroll. And if the Mariners, I think he's getting paid like, what, eight or nine million next Ten. year? 10 million. So if the Mariners are going out there and saying they only have X amount of money to spend, that 10 million would put them slightly above, if, if we're going off Divish, what Divish said. That put them slightly above where they were last year at 142 million. Mm-hmm. Fine, like cool. If that's what if that's what you feel you need to do, if that's the, the cap that you are putting on yourself, then sure. And I think that your team is much better because of it. He's a guy that could hit seventh or eighth in your lineup and be damn good in it. That'd be a great seven or eight hole. I'm not even bad at nine, just like a second leadoff hitter with who or JP and Julio up there. Yeah, I think I don't think it would cost a lot, especially for taking on the whole contract. I don't think it would cost. I don't. I don't like you. Can, you'd have to do it without trading Ty France. Because you don't, uh, Rayleigh is not the answer over there right now. To be your everyday first baseman. Right. And so you'd have to do it without trading Ty France, but I think you can get it done with some depth pieces. I don't think it's going to cost you an Emerson Hancock, or you definitely don't need to throw in Brian Wu or Bryce Miller. So I don't know what the, what the return would be for Jorge Polanco, but if you're taking on that whole contract, it should not be much. We're talking like maybe like a top 10 to 20, pro- not top 10, top uh, in the 10 to 20 range, I yeah. think prospect wise and then maybe like maybe jackson coar i don't know but it shouldn't take a whole lot to get jorge blanco and like i said i think he fills out this roster quite nicely yeah he did put up a 115 ops plus like you're saying that was last year last three years rolling was 125 in 2021 in 152 games and then 115 in 104 games in 2022 and he only played in 80 games last year so not full seasons the last two years but I don't disagree with you that I think Polanco is someone that at the beginning of the offseason, there was some rumblings, maybe just us theorizing, not us, but just people in general theorizing like, hey, could this guy be a fit? And we're like, "Mm, don't love it. Now, I I think he does make a good bit of sense. Strikeout percentage at 25.7 last year, but that's his career high. Previously, he was more around like the 18% range. So doesn't strike out a ton if he it goes back to his more so career norm. I agree that it won't take a ton as well. If you have to give up Emerson Hancock in this, it should just be a one to one at that. But like that's still I don't I don't know. It's it's weird with how pitching like value is right now because we know that the Twins are probably going to want cheap pitching because all of their pitchers have left them this off season, and whether or not that's worth it on our end to give up Hancock for just Polanco as it is probably not. So it's just if they're hmm. it if they're eating some of the contract, then sure. Okay. Like like maybe if they eat half the contract, you know, and you're paying Polanco five million, I'd do Hancock. But otherwise I wouldn't because it's one year of Jorge Polanco. Yeah. Well yeah. thank you to thank you to Michael Thompson on Twitter for replying to our tweet yesterday. And this this made it as a podcast segment, so congrats. <laughs> Congrats on that. Thank you for responding to us. Figured we'd save it for this. We could have a more fleshed out conversation. I was worried you were going to say Matt Chapman. I thought oh, like God, for some no. reason, some reason the, the devil oh. magic got into your ear over the last like 24 <laughs> hours. And they were like, Matt Chapman's not terrible and totally worth like the amount of money that you'd give him. And it's just 25 not. million a year. Yeah. yeah. And with the payroll constraints, that just also doesn't make sense. So yeah. Yeah, no, no, Matt Chapman in no way, shape, or form makes sense. Even if Gossler's right, yeah, I mean, then you're then you'd be it. And if it's a backloaded contract, maybe, but I don't care. I'm not in. 
Speaking of which, speaking of backloaded contracts, Teo right now and like the 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 steam between him and the Dodgers, like they're willing to go over three years for him. That's risky. I know that I saw someone say that the Red Sox offered him two, and yeah, so, they declined or something. I just didn't go further yeah. than that. They won't go to three. I think is what they said, which is bizarre. I feel like three would be fine if it's. Well, I don't know. Three I, would be the I most I'd go with him. Yeah. Yeah. Like three at like like a three year forty five like uh, uh Candelario's deal. Thank you. I almost said Camonero, like you were saying. <laughs> Candelario got. I think makes sense. I think that's a good deal for Teo. So I don't know. I mean, we've heard the Mariners are rumored to be in on Teo still, but I don't think so. Like I just don't does, see the fit on the roster sense, and yeah. with the money that's involved there too. Mm -hmm. Like we've already got. I don't. The whole conversation last year was, is Teo a lateral move to Mitch? And then now we're back in the same boat. <laughs> like, we bring back Teo. And, like, it'll just be, like, a weird thing. I don't know. Yes. Hey, I'm here to break some news. Uh, outfielder Teoscar Hernandez and the Los Angeles Dodgers are in agreement on a one-year $23.5 million deal. He got paid $23.5 million. He got over what they what, – what the – um qualifying he got three more million dollars in the qualifying offer for one year wow. oh wow is it like a giolito thing where there's an option or is it just a strict one-year deal as of right now it looks like it's just a strict one-year deal but i mean i'm sure more stuff will come out about it thank god the mariners didn't do that <laughs> um eight and a half million of it will be deferred those bastards to be, to be paid from 2030 to 2039 so basically a million like, a year from 2030 to 2039. So we're just allowing money laundering schemes in the MLB now is what we're saying. So yeah. Mean, Alex Anthopoulos has been doing it in Atlanta for like six or seven years. Everyone's just starting to catch on now, I guess. What the heck, man? So they're paying about $15 million a year, which is what I just said. $50 million this year. Yeah. Wow. But only a one-year deal, which is very, very interesting. That, dude, that lineup. Oh, oh my no. god. If it, it, it's it's getting worse for the Dodgers if they don't win the World Series. <laughs> That's true. You know? That is true. I mean, teams like the Padres and the Rockies, the Rockies why? just need to tear it all down. No, why they, why would they even try? Yeah, no, tear it all down like if you're the Rockies. I mean, you're the Diamondbacks, you just won the World Series and you're watching the Dodgers do this. You're like, "Shoot. Hey, Eduardo Rodriguez, um you have actually failed your physical. Sorry, <laughs> um, I, I they still. I mean, they'll 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 have a chance at the wild card, and yeah. that's all it took for them last year to make it to the World Series. So, mm. you know, it's just whether or not they can they can make it out of L.A. alive. Yeah, I mean that's that. Wow, where's he, he's going to hit like six or seventh in their lineup? Maybe even oh. <laughs> what are they? They're just playing. I don't be the show at this rate. They're just playing fantasy. <laughs> so, so what is their lineup? What's their lineup right now? Let me go to the roster resource and plug in Teo. Is Mookie is Mookie leading off? Yeah, Mookie. So Mookie, Mookie Freeman. Freddy. Oh, I hate uh, calling him Freeman. That was I'm gonna vomit in my <laughs> mouth. Okay, I'm on their roster resource page. It's loading. Okay, so lineup as it stands right now, according to Fangraphs roster resource, Mookie batting leadoff, Shohei batting second, mm. Freddie batting third, Will Smith batting fourth, Max Muncie. Batting fifth, James Outman batting sixth. Six. They already have Teo updated on here. <laughs> and he's batting really? seventh. That They're... quick? <laughs> Dude, it's been like, what, like five minutes? They already haven't updated. <laughs> they don't sleep. Um, and then Jason Hayward batting eighth, Gavin Lux batting ninth. Uh, you could still probably find a. Who's on their bench? Austin Barnes, Miguel Rojas, Chris Taylor, Manny Margot. So whenever. You want if there's you know a, a tough lefty on the mound, Hayward sits and Chris Taylor's in. So, or or Manny Margot. I mean, yeah, well, he hits lefties pretty well. Mm -hmm. You got wow. options there. Wow, Dodgers are going for it, man. God, wouldn't it be cool if the Mariners would do that? Nah, it's overrated. Yeah, I'd rather I'd rather have a hundred and forty million dollar payroll and a nice bar and a press club, baby. What was yeah. the point of hosting the All Star Game? What was the point? Just to do it. Just to, just to say that we did it. Yeah, that's fun. That's cool. Where'd all the money go, Jonathan? Huh? You first, you first name, like full first naming him? Johnny. Johnny boy. Put Johnny on the spot. Tell us where the money is, pal. I don't know. The Mariners, 
still have one big move to make, and I guess Teoscar Hernandez is now off the board. But hey, we appreciate you guys watching episode 50, big one of the Hit It Here podcast, presented by Bet Online and Go Mariners.